Michael Thomas now sits at 145 receptions. And counting. He is the all-time leader in NFL history after passing Marvin Harrison yesterday in the Saints' win. And for all the talk, and this is something we talked about on our night show for a while, Lamar Jackson clearly is going to be the MVP of the NFL. For for all the talk about Lamar and Russell Wilson. Then La- Russell Wilson will get votes. He'll get votes. That's but- all. It won't be unanimous. Like some, some people were arguing at one point that it it should be unanimous. It's not going to be unanimous. But but here but here's the thing. As good of season as Russell Wilson is having, Lamar Jackson just has the it factor about him. And what he the jump he was able to make, he's got his team the best team in the AFC and the odds on favorite to win the Super Bowl. But then there are people who would, would, would look and say, well, he has 11 other other pro bowlers on his team is it all him you know he's getting all the credit and accolades they got a hell of a football team there Baltimore oh they do but he's also leading the league in touchdowns I, and he's run for a thousand he would get my vote. what else does he need to do he would get my vote so I'm not saying that but I think that there are other people out there who might not follow suit and say that what Russell Wilson was able to do right he th- he only has one other pro bowler on his team well, and that's why I can make a great argument for Michael Thomas as the MVP in wow. the NFL. All okay. right, he's going to get to the number that cuts through the clutter: 150 receptions. Right, all-time leader. He's going to—they're going to do everything they can to get him those five catches next week. 150 receptions, a number we've never seen. Marvin Harrison's record stood for 17 years. But more importantly, is that there's nobody else that you can throw the ball to in New Orleans. He has over 100 more catches than the next closest receiver to him. Jared Cook has 41 catches. But That's number two. He's got 145. The only guy, defenses roll towards Michael Thomas, and still he makes those catches. And still he's the only guy in that offense. But a wide receiver has never won, so you're trying to like shatter records. And here's the other thing. The other record you just talked about for 17 years, the only problem I have with this is they throw a hell of a lot more now. So some of the numbers are skewed. It's just like even even Dak Prescott and some of these guys with all the numbers. He's the second most most yards ever in the history of the Dallas Cowboy uh passing yards, right? Second all time. Well, they throw the football a lot. And the other in the old days, they didn't throw the football at this rate. So even his and I'm not trying to poo-poo. But still, they throw the football all the time now, and it still stood for 17 years. I I get it, but they throw a lot more the last couple years than they ever have, and I just, the the record is a little, a little hollow to me. It's going to be 150. I understand. Not 110. But do you? Not 120. It's going to be 150. But do you agree that they throw the football a lot Oh, they do. Okay, that's all I'm saying. They do throw it more, but 150 more when there's nobody else. I mean, think about it. I don't think he's MVP worthy when you think about some of the other seasons that the the two quarterbacks have had when we talk about uh, Jackson and uh, Wilson. Uh, And and, um, just the history of the award. It would be so earth shattering because if if that was the case, um, when the record was set seventeen years ago, why 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 didn't he get the MVP? You're the H wrote now, I'm the hatingest wide receiver of all time. No, I'm just you're saying hating on, hating on a guy who, who's going to do something. And I agree if you're a, if you're a wide receiver, you're a non quarterback. You need to do something special that no one's ever seen before. Ta da! 150 catches. Now, if he was able to get to 2,000 yards. 150 and 2,000, I would say that's a toss-up between him and Lamar Jack. Now, he's not going to get to 2,000 yards. He's going to probably finish up around 1,800, which is still a phenomenal that's a year. number. I'm not even trying to discount but his year. You, you talk about uh, Lamar Jack's 11 Pro Bowlers. Like I said, Alvin Kamara is the only guy catching passes, and he's doing it out of the backfield. Nobody else. He's got 100 more receptions than the next closest pass catcher on. A hundred more. So you know how teams roll coverages towards him and still that big wingspan, he doesn't drop. He had one drop pass in the last 25 games. I mean, that's how good he is. His first four years of the league have been absolutely amazing. I, I get it. And he set a record, but I just think uh, where we are in the NFL and when you take a look at what Lamar did this year, a lot of people, you had Bill Polian before he was even draft talking about he should – try out for wide receiver and people who totally discounted him despite him winning a Heisman. We've seen a lot of guys win Heisman and uh, not be able to do anything in the NFL. So that's not that shocking, even though he won a Heisman. But he 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 shook up the NFL this year. You got to give him that. And I think that's why he'll be the MVP. Yeah, I, I'm just hoping that Michael Thomas gets the love he should. He should finish second. 
Because if you're talking about two quarterbacks and you're giving it to Lamar Jackson, all right, well then, Russell Wilson can't be the MVP. Michael Thomas should be that should be that guy. So you want him to, to be, be like MVP. Jerry Rice, who finished second one time as MVP. Basically. Sure, he should absolutely. He should be. He should be number two with a bullet. And if he had two thousand yards, I'd say it'd be a toss up. Yeah, because those are numbers that just no matter what you want to say, that cuts through one hundred fifty-two thousand. But the thing is, when you think about this football season, twenty nineteen, you think about Lamar Jackson. You do, but am I right? You do, but you're you can't tell the story of this season without Michael Thomas being at the very top. One hundred and fifty, Rob. 150. I mean, you think about the Cowboys stinking as well. Yeah, that's You think about that, that's out there too. So there's that. But that's a good thing for most people. Now we have to turn the page to tonight, Minnesota and Green Bay, where this is this game means everything for the Packers, for the Vikings, because there's only a couple of teams that can win the Super Bowl coming out of the NFC, and it's all going to depend on home field and who's got it. I know what Kirk Cousins' record is on Monday night. I know how bad he is in primetime games. I know he's 0-8. I know there's no Dalvin Cook tonight. I, I get all of this, Rob Parker. I understand. But tonight no. is going to be the Kirk Cousins Stop game. Stop it. Stop. Tonight's going to be – look. Jason, the, you will regret this. Minnesota's offense is rolling. They're playing at home. No Green Dalvin Bay, Cook? You really? Want, you want to talk about fraudulent? The Packers are more fraudulent than a lot of other teams No, they are. aren't. They've beaten, they've beaten better teams. It's always about who you beat as well. They went to Dallas. They won. They beat the Bears. Man, you just early said that Dallas season. is fraudulent. How could that be a big no, win? No, but I'm talking about on the road. Okay. On, on the road. I'm just saying there were games that they that they won. They beat Minnesota earlier this year. They beat the Bears. You could go through their 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 wins, and the wins are impressive. And that's what it's about. Winning. It's not pretty. I'll be the first to tell you. No uh, fancy dress. No high heels. It hasn't been pretty. But they've won, and mm-hmm. that's what it's about. Do they have a running back that they haven't had before, Jason? He has 17 touchdowns last time. I mean, but he's not as dynamic as we thought as we thought he was going to be middle of the season. Do they make plays defensively? I'm not saying they're a great defense. They make they, a decent number of plays. They get they take get takeaways, right? Yeah. All I'm saying is this is different from what Aaron Rodgers has ever had, and if Aaron Rodgers, the guy, shows up and has a has a, has a good game. This team could be very dangerous because they have the running aspect and they have a defense that can make plays. That's all I'm saying. I do not – if Dalvin Cook was playing, I would be with you. I do not believe that this is going to be Kirk Cousins' coming out party and he's finally going to do it. His record against teams over 500 is also very poor. He just hasn't beaten won those games. And, I'm, and I'll wait to see when he does with this game being as big as it is and on the line – for the Packers and what they've worked for all year, I believe that they win this game. Doesn't matter tonight. Vikings also won in Dallas on the road. Their offense is really rolling. Kirk Cousins has been a pretty good quarterback throughout his career. Has he beaten the great teams? No, but he still is someone who's going to throw 30-some-odd touchdowns and, and have a 3-1 to one touchdown to interception and ratio. The, and the Packers have something to play for. Home field is what they would – which makes them – a tougher out if you do play up in Lambeau. Would you at least give me that? The of elements course. in the play. Well, every, that's why, so that's home why it, field is such a big deal. It but is. it's a big deal for Minnesota as well. They don't want to. They don't want to play a game in Green Bay. Nobody else wants to play a game in Green Bay. No, I get it. But I think Green Bay, of all the teams in the NFL, that place there's still something about it. And you want to get there, and it's cold, and other people aren't used to it. And uh, you know you got to go to the Walmart downtown Green Bay. There's not much going. On. <laughs> you got to go to Walmart. Do you yeah, know? Have I you been that. to down? Have you been to downtown Green Bay? I've not been, been. I've been to Madison, but I've not been to Green Bay. Unbelievable. All right, there's, there's nothing there. Now you understand this game oh, tonight sorry. is being played in Minnesota. I do understand okay, it's that. Not, yes. I get they're playing for this game is in Minnesota. I understand this game that. is happening. Kirk Cousins has had a phenomenal year. He has had a Pro Bowl caliber year, even though he got snubbed, because you have quarterbacks that made it that are all very similar in the NFC. They could have taken Kirk Cousins to the Pro Bowl. They could have not taken him. They didn't but take him. You it's know okay. why? The reason that they didn't take him is because I think that you got to look at who do you beat. That I think that that factors in a lot. You know, with who are you beating? Are you beating the also Rams? Are you beating the good teams? And I think that those things matter. And that's why Dak's numbers early on didn't matter to me, the 3-0 and start. Because they were against the three worst teams in the league. Would you agree with that at that point? Yes, they were against the three worst the teams. The three worst teams. And all of them wound up having horrible seasons. Right, but you're 10-4. and four. You're not 7-7. You're, not seven and seven. you're 10-4. and four. The Vikings, you've beaten almost everybody. No, you've I get everybody. it. You've beaten everybody. I get it, but I think the Packers have a, have a better run, and I think that a, a better 
record or resume, I'll say a better resume, and if they beat them again and beat them in Minnesota, this will be exactly what they want. I think this is the game that Aaron Rodgers wants to come out, play well in indoors, right? You got to run him back, have a defense, get uh, one or two turnovers, uh, takeaways, and you're good to go. Well, the good news is you and I are going to get to find out which one of us is right tomorrow because we're doing the show together tomorrow. Yes, I'm going to be right. This as will be I the, always am. the Kirk Cousins game. We're gonna. It's going to have a name. Okay. The Kirk Cousins game. He's going to rewrite everything. He's just going to have that. This is his season. This is Why his game. Why are you game. making me? You like Chris Broussard? You're going to have me in the parking lot after he tanks it tonight, and I'll be waiting <laughs> to come in again. I have to sleep in the parking lot. Wait. <laughs> to get at you tomorrow here on the Dan Patrick Show.